2,000 years ago, there were a group of Greek philosophers called the Pythagoreans. And they worked out the laws of harmony on a violin string. They realized if you take a violin string and you looked at the resonance of it, the resonances corresponded to integers, and they were marveled that music could be explained in terms of a vibrating string. And they then said that perhaps the universe could be explained by the laws of harmony. We now believe that we can revive the thoughts of the early Pythagoreans and explain the universe through vibrating superstrings. Some people say, you know, Professor, when I see a chair, I know what a chair is, I can feel a chair, touch a chair, but you physicists, when you talk about strings, what the hell is that? Well, yes, we are all agreed what a chair is. The chair has four legs, and it's made out of wood or metal, and it has atoms inside. However, what makes up the atoms? Well, if you look inside the atoms, there's electrons whizzing around the nucleus. Well, what are they made out of? You can smash them apart. Inside the nucleus, there are uh, protons and neutrons. Well, we've smashed them. What's inside neutrons and protons? Well, we think there's something called quarks. Well, does it stop there? Does it stop at the quarks? We now believe that if you had a microscope and could look at the quarks themselves, you would realize that they are nothing but little loops. Little tiny vibrating loops vibrating at a certain mode. And if you whacked it hard enough, it would turn into an electron. And if you whacked it hard enough, again, it would turn into light. So in other words, we're talking about an elemental uber form of matter. One object, such that if it simply vibrates in a different way, it can create all the things we see around us. Therefore, instead of having this whole zoo of subatomic particles, you just have the string. However, this theory had a very big defect, a defect so great that it led to the near death of this theory. This theory predicts that the universe exists in 10-dimensional hyperspace. And I remember the very instant that was worked out in the early 70s. At that point, the cynic said, this is Star Trek. Beam me up, Scotty. I mean, you want us to believe that there are hidden dimensions out there? just like the mystics used to talk about ghosts and demons in higher dimensional space, we were laughed at. It was very hard for us physicists to get jobs. People were saying, this is science fiction. This is not physics. We're talking about a theory of everything based on 10-dimensional hyperspace? Come on. Well, we have the last laugh. Because now, string theory is taught in all the major universities. All the Ivy League schools are scrambling to hire string theorists. And we now believe that the mind of God, the mind of God is music resonating through 10-dimensional hyperspace. After we give a talk on string theory, there's always somebody giggling in the back. There's always somebody, a cynic, who's just shaking his head, and then he has the courage to raise his hand and says, Professor, all this is hogwash. Einstein would say that a black hole is an extremely dense object, so dense that it begins to warp the fabric of space and time into a funnel. And in and some in sense, fact, that criticism has some validity. The this is the theory of creation. It's a theory of the Big Bang itself. Therefore, to test the theory rigorously, we have to recreate the Big Bang, which is not possible.
At the present time on Earth, no one is smart enough to solve this theory. Nobody on Earth can solve the equations that I and my colleagues have written down. However, when someone does solve this theory completely, we should find our universe as one of the solutions of this theory. So once we've solved the theory by pure thought, we should be able to compare it with the subatomic particles we see in nature, and the game is over. At that point, it's finished. So what if you find this equation? Are we going to get better color TV? Are we going to get better sliced bread? Are we going to get a better a microwave reception just because you have this fantastic unified field theory? And the answer is no. However, I do believe that one day the destiny of all intelligent life in the universe will hinge on this equation. Trillions of years from now, we physicists believe that the universe will end not in fire, but in ice. My thinking is, when we reach the end of the universe itself, we'll simply take the unified field theory and create a lifeboat. We'll create a bubble, a baby universe on our dying universe. And just like a lifeboat, we'll leave the mothership to go to perhaps another universe, a warmer, younger universe. So in some sense, perhaps the unified field theory may be the salvation for all intelligent life in the universe, which does not have to die when the universe dies. Sometimes late at night, when I'm all by myself, thinking that here we are on the threshold of the greatest breakthrough of all time, the creation of the theory of the universe, I say to myself, well, maybe it's all wrong. I mean, maybe we physicists don't know what the hell we're talking about. The string theory may be a theory of nothing, rather than a theory of everything. That's the rub. String theory has no arbitrary parameters you can play with. You can't tweak it, you can't modify it. Therefore, if you solve it, either it's the entire universe, or it's nothing at all. When I write symbols and letters on the blackboard and I play with them in my head, I ask myself a question that Einstein asked himself in the morning. If I'm going to create a universe, if I am God, how would I create this universe? And then I start to play with certain equations, and then I begin to realize they're ugly. And I say to myself, well, if I'm God, I don't want to live in a universe like this. And I scratch this out, and I say, no, no, it can't be right. It's too awkward. It's too clumsy. That's not the way I would create a universe if I'm God. The nature of existence, the nature of reality, the secret of the universe should be expressed in an equation one inch long, and I want to find it.